So what happens when you spend a couple hours cutting out an aluminum frame for a three pound combat robot only to realize you screwed it all up and made the same mistake you made with 3D printed frames several weeks ago? Well, you can't use that for video, but fortunately pogs are back. Not an ALF form, but I never really liked that show as a kid, that hell alien thing is kind of creepy anyway, so that doesn't bother me. I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield, and when I was back at my parents' house working on my 3D printed, why do I keep calling it 3D printed, the three pound combat robot, I discovered a whole stash of pogs hidden away in my workbench at my parents' house there, but there's no slammer in there, which is the kind of heavy thing you use to smack the pile and flip the pogs over, so this week, in honor of the release of Blender 2.8 somehow, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to design your own a custom 3D printed weighted slammer for pogs. So Pogs was a silly game from the mid 1990s or so, early 90s. It's a few years before the Pokemon card craze ever took off, and it's a few years before that not so civil period where Adults beat the living crap out of each other in the lobbies of fast food restaurants over teeny beanbag filled plush animals. But let's not talk about that unpleasantness. By the way, they're all available for sale on eBay for about a dollar each. Um, but pogs were little cardboard, I guess, token things called milk caps oftentimes. And they featured weird stuff like, in this case, propaganda from the oil and gas industry. Animals like an alligator. Weird jokes that today we consider to be pot references. Uh, this is a popular character from actually a brand name of Pogs. We had the politically correct Pine Knot Christmas Tree Tree. The giant and a bear. Of course, we had real licensed products, like here's a villain from the Spider-Man franchise, and um, oh, another alligator. But the game was basically pretty simple. You would take a stack of Pogs and put them face down, and you and you would use a heavier object called a slammer, and you would throw this into the stack of Pogs, and the ones that landed face up were the ones that you kept as points. And then you go back and forth until there is no pogs left in the stack. And whoever had the most face up at the end of that would be the winner of the round. So when it comes to building the slammer we're building today, well, essentially what we're going to be doing is making a 3D printed container for some washers. So we can have something that's a plastic casing but with a nice weight inside. Let me draw out what I'm thinking about this, and we'll jump into Blender in just a moment here. So if you look in from the side, it's pretty much going to be a U casing. Like this here. And then there's going to have probably two washers sitting inside like that. And then there will be a lid that comes down, and it has a little bit of a peg embedded in it that will fit through the center of the washers. And these here, these are called fender washers to where they're fairly, the actual have a fairly large surface area. So what we need to know is figure out what is the outer diameter of our entire slammer gonna be? What's the outer diameter of the washers, the inner diameter of the washers, and then the height of two, a little bit more than two washers to figure out what space we need in the middle. I got my calipers here, we're gonna do some measurements. Let me just grab a random pog and let me measure the outside diameter of that because we want our slammer to be similar size to the pog. I don't know if they had to be the exact same diameter but they're usually pretty darn close. And we're looking around 42 millimeters. Now the outer diameter of the washers that I have that is about, we're going to round up a little bit just because 3D printing circle or 3D printing holes are not entirely accurate. Let's go to 32.7 millimeters. So why don't we just make it a nice 33 millimeters. So I picked up the wash I'm trying to measure. Um, and then let me figure out the inner diameter of the washer hole, which is 9 millimeters. So let's drop that down to 8 millimeters for the peg. So we'll say 8 millimeters. So that translates in here to being 33 millimeters, and this guy right here is 8 millimeters. And then the thickness of the washers are 1.29 millimeters, so let's say 1.5 millimeters each. So let's do internally, we'll do 3 millimeters. And then how about I am going to make the end caps be 1 millimeter one millimeter each. 
Okay, so with that data here, I can jump into Blender and very quickly build a 3D model of the Pog Slammer. We are now inside Blender and Blender 2.8 is officially released. Say goodbye to 2.79. And well, they moved most of the keyboard commands over from 2.79, but I'll probably still screw a bunch of things up because just enough things are different to drive me crazy. So anyway, let's just kill the cube as we always do. That's just gonna be tradition from now until forever. And we can get rid of both the light as well as the camera. So let's left click on the light, shift left click on the camera, hit X and choose delete. And then let's jump to the modeling tab because that's all we're really gonna be doing here. So shift A, hover over mesh, choose cylinder in the lower left. Okay, I chose add cone, that's a fail. Shift A, mesh, choose cylinder. Now in the lower left hand corner of the screen, you'll see a little add cylinder box. We wanna click on that. And we're gonna start changing some values over here. Vertices, let's go up to 256. So we're gonna make this a super smooth cylinder. For the radius, we're gonna start with the outside shell. For the radius, it's a 42 millimeter diameter. Let's divide that by two. So type in 21 for the radius. And you're gonna get a huge giant thing here. For the depth, I'm gonna make a quick change to my distances over here. I'm gonna go for one and a half millimeters for the outside shells and three millimeters for the washer cavity. And that's what this bottom piece is gonna have. So let's add those two together and we get a depth of 4.5. And then there we go. So this is gonna become the bottom half of our Pog Slammer. Let's click on our object properties. That's a little box over here, or sorry, context object. It's a little box, orange box with the four kind of corner things around it. And let's call this Slammer Bottom. Now I need to cut out the cavity for the washers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit Shift D to duplicate the object I have selected here. Press Z and we're gonna move it up and out of the way. Now let's press N. This is gonna bring up a whole bunch of properties over here on the right hand side. I wanna change the X and Y dimensions down to the container area for the washers. So let's change those to 33 millimeters each. And now you've got a little bit of a smaller looking um, cylinder there. Now what I'm gonna do is change the Z down to three millimeters. So this is thing here is gonna represent the area that gets cut out of the bottom of the Pog Slammer. So let's call this thing the um, empty washer space. Press G and Z to drag down the object. And before I get it anywhere closer, I wanna hit Z on the keyboard and then choose wireframe. So now I can kind of see through my objects. Press G, Z again. And what I want to do is very closely align the top of these two cylinders. So now you can kind of see that the empty washer space is sitting inside of our bottom of the pog slammer. Now with the empty washer space selected, press tab. This goes into edit mode, which lets me manipulate the individual vertices that make up this mesh. Left click somewhere in the empty space here. Press B for box select. And I want to select the top of the empty space right here. So you can kind of see now that the, all the vertices of the washer's top have been selected. Press G, Z to move them again and just drag them up really far. Pog Slammer. So let's left click on the bottom of the Pog Slammer. And I'm gonna do a Boolean operation to cut out this empty space. So click on the modifiers context, which is the little wrench looking thing over here on the right hand side. Click on add modifier. We're gonna choose Boolean. Operation, we want to be difference. For object, we only have one choice, which is the empty washer space. Now holding down the middle mouse button, I'm gonna look around and you can tell, well, it does look like I've got a section cut out of the bottom and pog slammer, which is what I want to see right now. So let's just hit apply. And then what I can do is take this mesh right here. I'm just gonna hide it. So in the upper right hand corner under this collections area, look for your empty washer space. It should be highlighted in orange. And just click the little visible thing over here on the right hand side and that's gonna hide it. Press Z, choose solid. And now you can see you've got a base of the Pog Slammer cut out. Now let's make the top half of the Pog Slammer. For that, we're gonna do Shift A and add a new cylinder. 
Now our little pop-up thing down here should be more or less the same what it was. The radius stayed the same because the top of the slammer is going to be 42 millimeter diameter or 21 millimeter radius. For the depth though, we want to only set it to 1.5 because this is just a small top piece. And you can see now there's a new um, cylinder right here highlighted kind of in the middle of your old one. Press GZ and we'll drag it up, just get it out of the way for right now. Let's click on our object context, the orange square with the four corner things, and we're going to rename this guy to Slammer Top. Alrighty. We're starting to see a little bit of a container for the washer, so you know, when you throw this thing really hard, it gives you bonus damage. Or if you flick into your eye, it almost gives you a bit of a black eye. Yeah, anyway. It, yeah. If you wonder why in an upcoming video why I'm checking out my eye if it's a black eye or not, now you know why. Um, <laughs> total fail moment. Okay. Now we want to add the peg that's attached to the top of the slammer that's going to go down into the middle of the washer to kind of hold them in place a little bit better. And kind of also, it's going to serve as an anchor point for when you glue the top of the slammer on to the bottom. So for that, let's press 1 on the numpad to go to our front view. Shift D to duplicate the top of our slammer. Press Z to move it up. So now we've got a third cylinder up here. And just like before, we're going to reduce the dimensions of the X and Y to make and match the dimensions of the peg on the inside, which we know is 8 millimeters. So X and Y. Let's click, nope, don't click scale. Click on dimensions and hit 8. Do the same thing for Y. And there you go. Now you can see we got a much smaller peg. For the Z, we want it to be 3 millimeters. Well, probably a little bit smaller than that. It needs to fit in a 3 millimeter empty space. And once again, 3D printing is approximately correct. So let's do 2.5 millimeters for the Z height. So let's left click on the peg, make sure it's still at x of 0, y of 0, press G and Z. This is going to lock, so the reason I keep hitting Z is what that does is G moves an object around in Blender, but by pressing Z afterwards, that locks it to a certain axis, in this case the Z axis, which is up and down. What I want to do, I want to get this guy such that the top of it is very close to the bottom of the top of the slammer, and let's press Z by itself and then choose wireframe and then GZ again and line it up eh, does nothing perfect pretty close like that so with this guy selected press tab to go into edit mode left click away from it so that everything turns black and then press B for box select hold down the left mouse button I want to select the top face of this cylinder press G and Z and we're going to move it up and into the top of the pog slammer and that's just useful for when we 3d print things you want to have a little bit of overlap between two objects if you want them to be printed together if they don't have that overlap well weird things can happen with your slicer program and with that what i can do now is with this guy selected hold down shift and left click on the pog top or the left click on the slammer top hit Control j and that's going to join them together into one object. Now with our new completed slammer top, press G and Z to move it down and just kind of set it up more or less on top of the slammer bottom. And what you want to make sure is that when this guy is resting on top, there's a little bit of space between the bottom of the peg and the bottom of the empty space where the washers are going to go. And that's what we see right here. Here's the bottom of the peg, and here's the bottom of the washer space. All right, so that is basically the gist of how you'd make this kind of pog slammer thing. But like I said, I want to customize this a bit. So I'm going to have a little bit of fun and inscribe the shape of the state of Michigan from a 1795 map of the United States. So here we go. This is actually, like I said, a model of the map of Michigan from 1795. I'm going to press G and move it on top of the pog slammer. It's a little bit big at the moment. Oh, there's the new keyboard command that I don't know what. Oopsie daisy. Well, okay. So it's a little bit big at the moment, so I'm going to press S to scale things down until it more or less fits in pretty good. I think then maybe go a little bit bigger. 
That's, I think that'll look pretty good right there. That's about the right size. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my front view, press G and Z, and I'm going to put it in such a way to where, well, maybe it's about halfway down the top of the lid right there. So you can kind of see how this, this particular piece, in this case, the shape of Michigan, is kind of embedded halfway down in the top. I am going to now, these are actually two separate objects. I'm going to hit Control J to join them together. And we're going to rename this MI17, not MI1795. And then let's do Shift D to duplicate it, press Z, and I'm going to move it down to where it's kind of similar position in the bottom to where you can see that is embedded itself maybe oh about halfway into the bottom of the slammer here. I do want to do a little bit of cleanup on this object. I've noticed if I zoom in here, you can see that the um, two pieces are not the exact same height. So let's tab into edit mode. Left click away from everything. Just do a box select to everything at the top. Press S for scale, Z for the Z axis, zero and then left click. Uh, good, that still works in Blender 2.8. What that does, it just aligns all those vertices along that axis. So once again, box select the bottom one, S for scale, Z for the axes, number zero, or sorry, yeah, number zero, not numpad zero, number zero. And that's gonna align all those and turn that into a flat object, or turn those two pieces into a flat face. The same thing for the top. And now I'm going to do a Boolean operation to inscribe this shape into the slammer. All right, so let's click on the top of the slammer. Let's go to our modifiers tab, the little wrench over here. Sorry, modifiers context now. Choose add modifier, Boolean, difference. Um, the top one, actually need to see here, the top one is just MI1795. So for the object, choose the object we're cutting into it. And that actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to click on the top Michigan map and up in our collections area, let's just hide it. And then press Z, choose solid. Hey, that looks pretty good. We've got the 1795 map of Michigan inscribed in the slammer. And now we're going to do the same thing here in the bottom. So we're going to click on the bottom half of the pog slammer. Let's go to the modifiers context. We're going to choose add modifier boolean. This time the object though is going to be the MI1795.001 because that's the copy we moved to the bottom. I'm going to press Z, choose wireframe, and that looks pretty good as it is. I just want to make sure that, yep, so I want to, want to make sure here is that the, um, wherever this cut inset is, it's got some distance between it and the kind of washer space where the washers get stored. So there needs to be a little bit of material here just to kind of keep everything, I guess, you know, to keep things from breaking horrifically. Press apply. Let's click on the bottom map of Michigan. We're going to hide that one as well in the collection menu. And now if I go back to solid, we should be seeing two things in Michigan inscribed in the pog slammer. All right. Well, that is the model tutorial at this point. I'm going to print these things off on my 3D printer and we'll get ready to assemble them. So when it comes to 3D printing these, I'm going to 3D print them such that the two inscribed faces are facing upward and that there's just going to be support material that's going to be removed and all that support material is going to be on the inside where the washers are going to go. So I don't really care about making it look halfway nice or pretty. So instead of a crappy explanation, why don't we just look at these things in Cura? And you can see here I've got the two shapes of Michigan facing upward. And then down here in the bottom, you can see all the support materials. That's how I'm orient them in my 3D printer. All right, let's go ahead and hit print and go from there. Well, there we go. We got our 3D printed Pog Slammer case done. And both sides have the 1795 map of Michigan inscribed in them. This one's kind of backwards because it didn't rotate it properly. But that's for if you ever talk to somebody from Michigan and ask, you ask them where do they live and they hold their hand up, but they don't know which way to hold their hand up because, you know, it's like a mirror thing. It's, it's, a, it's a Michigan joke. Um, <laughs> that honors them. Actually, what you really need to do 
is when you move your um, cutout to the bottom of your slammer, make sure you do a mirror along the x-axis or y-axis, depending on what it happens to be, and then that will solve that problem. But, you know, I don't really care about it. Okay, let's get things ready. I have to remove all the support material from these two pieces. The support material has been removed. We're going to start putting our washers in here. And for this, I'm going to glue them down with epoxy. So I've just got some five minute epoxy right here. I'm going to mix some of this up. We're going to put a layer down, put a washer in, layer down, washer in, one more layer of epoxy, and then put the lid on. To help hold this thing all together, I'm going to use a tiny little mini clamp and just apply as much pressure as I possibly can. <laughs> You're probably going to have a little bit of a crack here between the top and bottom half of the slammer. And as you can see, I'm just going to apply some epoxy around the edge of the slammer and in that little crack, and that should seal things up and hopefully make it one nice solid piece. But now because I have epoxy all over the sides of this, I just got to hold this thing until it sets, which shouldn't be too much longer. Once the epoxy is dried, we've got to clean things up a bit. Take some 60 grit sandpaper here and just clean up the slammer by sanding away any of the epoxy that's spilled off from between the two halves. And with that, we're pretty much done. If you want to, you can go ahead and take your new 3D printed POG slammer here and paint it up and you know give it a cool looking color scheme to it. But for this video, let's call this process done. Well, thank you guys all for watching. Once again, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. And now that your Pog Slammer is done, go ahead and try to find some Pogs in eBay or Etsy and have some fun playing that old game. So if you like this crazy random videos like this, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and hit that bell notification wherever it sits around the screen because that's what YouTube requires these days. And you need like three different things to keep getting my videos, blah, blah, blah. You know the drill. If you watch YouTube, you know all this random crap that people have to say. But hopefully next week, we'll be back to building MicroFlash Delta, my three pound combat robot with the correct aluminum frame pieces. I'll be cutting those out hopefully this weekend. So until then, have a great week.